Hey guys, and welcome to Craft Classy. If you're new, my name is Carolyn, and thank you for stopping by my channel. Today I have for you just one DIY, but it really is more like a few DIYs in one. I always have fun crafting, but this craft was extra fun, so let's get into it. Here are the supplies I used, but I ended up leaving out a couple of items shown here. The great thing about this DIY is it is 100% customizable to what you like. You really can use any craft supplies you want. There are two basic items you will need to have, which are birdhouses and a base to attach them to. This is what I used as a base. It is a one foot piece of a one by six, but you could use a sign from the Dollar Tree and cut it to whatever size you'd like. You might would want to double it up to make it a little bit thick, like glue two signs together to make a thicker, more substantial base. I went ahead and used this antique wax on a sheet of cork that I got from Dollar Tree. I also used the wax on one of the birdhouses. I left the roofing plain because I'm going to cover it. The other two birdhouses I painted in plaster by Waverly. Each house is going to get a different roofing material. For this one, I'm using pennies and I'm just going to hot glue them on in the pattern that you would for shingles. I'm mostly using hot glue on this entire project, except for some wood glue. If you want this item to sit outside, maybe on a covered porch, you might want to use a different sort of glue. Hot glue does not do very well outdoors. It gets brittle if it, you know, gets heated up and then cooled down, heated up and cooled down as the day goes on. And things usually just pop right off if you put something made with hot glue outside. Either way, I definitely wouldn't recommend putting this item completely outside in the weather. It would not last very long. It might would last fine if you used maybe E6000 or some other type of glue um, if, if you have a, like a covered porch to keep it out of the weather. Any small gaps that there are, don't worry about it. We're going to come back and be adding moss to any empty spots that need some coverage. For the next house, we're going to be using moss to completely cover the whole roof. You're just going to put some hot glue onto the top of the house and then just press it down into the moss. I got this bag of moss from the Dollar Tree. You will just put some glue, dip it in the moss, and then trim it up and fill in the empty spots.
For the last house, I'll be using these pine cone scales that I have. Um, I just I had to Google what they were what they would be called. I didn't know pine cone pieces. Um, you can buy them online, but I what I did is just went out um, and found some pine cones and cut them up with scissors. It was very tedious and they're kind of pointy, but it's worth it because it's a free craft supply. You really can use whatever you'd like for the roofing materials to change up the look that you're going for. I wanted to go for a real natural look for these. Um, and you're just going to apply these the same way you did the pennies. And the good thing about these is there are larger ones and smaller ones. On a pine cone, it's larger at the bottom, and then as it goes up, the pieces get smaller and smaller. So you can use the little pieces to fill in any empty spaces. Now we're going to attach our houses to the board and I'm going to be using hot glue and some wood glue as well. You can do as many houses as you'd like. Um, I was actually thinking that it would be awesome to do individual houses on their own individual boards and then you could continue making houses and just add to it you could make an entire village I think it would be really adorable on a mantle just as an alternative a spring version of a Christmas village I have these two crafting finials. I believe they're called finials. Um, you can find them in the wood section of Hobby Lobby. Can't remember where I got these. It's just not coming to me. But I'm going to use them as planters for our birds' flowers. Um, I'm going to use some antique wax on them just to make them look older. I want everything on here just about to look aged. I have these little flowers. We all have seen these. You can buy them at Walmart, craft stores, um, and they're just the right size for this. Most people have them in their craft stash already. There's not a whole lot you can do with them, but 
they worked out perfect for this. So I just um, messily used the antique wax and coated both of our flower pots and then wiped them off. The flowers that I had had some glitter on them. You can buy them that aren't glittery. You can buy them in all sorts of colors also. But I didn't like the glitteriness of them. I wanted them to be more matte. So I just took some acrylic matte white paint and painted each white rose white. Felt a little Alice in Wonderland while I was doing this. Here's where the sheet of cork comes in. I'm just going to be eyeballing, you'll eyeball, eyeball to the um, size of your board, the width of the, of the dirt path that you want to cut out. Um, you could just put the entire sheet of cork covering the entire board. I almost wish I had done that, but it worked out fine. Um, if you did that, you would just lay, put your after this, we're going to be putting moss down to cover up the exposed wood that you see. What was really handy about this was that it already had a, you know, self-adhesive backing on it. So you just peel that off and stick it down, and there it is. The reason I wanted to put antique wax on the cork was to make it a darker brown dirt as opposed to a lighter dirt that looks like clay dirt. Now these are wood pieces out of a wood craft from Dollar Tree. It was supposed to be for a car, I believe, and those are the wheels. And it has these little dowels and these little wood circles the dowels go down into, so kind of feel like I'm cheating. This just happened to be in my craft stash. So what we're making now are mailboxes. And you can just go and look in your craft stash and see what you have that you could use to make a little mailbox. You certainly could use cardboard or paper. I mean, just about anything tiny that you have. I mean, just use your imagination. To make the dome on each mailbox, I'm going to be using a piece of this sheet cork from Dollar Tree that we used for the path, and it ended up working perfectly. I would recommend using this for the mailboxes. I left the backing on the cork, and then as I bent the cork to make the dome, the cork would crack but it wouldn't come off the backing. And the cracks in the cork looked like bark on a tree. So it really turned out better than what I even thought it was going to. So I have three pieces of popsicle stick, the, the wider ones, not the giant ones, but bigger than the regular size. And I cut three rectangles out of popsicle stick 
for the base of our mailbox top. Now you're just going to glue the mailbox onto its post. And then I took hot glue and just went around where they connected, just adding extra hot glue for extra durability. And don't worry about that because we're going to paint um, over this wood, this unfinished wood anyway. So we will cover that hot glue right up. The paint that I used was Truffle by Waverly. I took some popsicle stick and just broke it down into a small rectangle to make the flag for the mailbox. I really need to get me some miter shears. You can use whatever you'd like for the flag. You could get so detailed and so creative with this. I just used some metallic um, acrylic paint from Walmart. I believe this is in copper. Just trying to give it a metal look. Now the mailbox needs a back on it. So I just cut out another piece of cork to the right shape and size and hot glued it on to the mailbox. At first, I put the hot glue on the front of the mailbox, and that's not where I wanted it to be. I realized my mistake and just let it dry and or let it harden and then put the back on the actual back of the mailbox. And it turned out fine. I just painted over the hot glue that I accidentally put on the front there, and you couldn't even tell. Then I went ahead and made two other mailboxes, making each one slightly different than the other. I didn't want them all to be identical.
I'm just going to hot glue the flowers into our tiny flower pots. And I thought that they needed a little bit of greenery. So the stems that they came with had some paper remnants on the on each stem. So I just trim those up and stuff them down in between the roses just to add a little bit of green. The shorter planter I felt might get lost in the moss because I knew I was going to be putting moss around it. So I wanted to give it a little bit of height. So I just took a couple of pieces of the cork scraps and glued them onto the bottom of the pot um, just to make it a little bit taller. And then I will cover the cork with, um, you know, it'll be hidden by the moss. And now it's time to make a complete mess. You're going to take the moss and I cut it up a little bit. I wanted it to be a little finer of a chop to um, so that it, there wasn't so many very long pieces. Um, I thought about putting this in my food processor, but then I thought that it might would chop it up too fine and make almost like moss powder and I wanted it to have a rustic look just like on the roof of that one house you see but I just wanted it to be a little bit shorter so I just roughly chopped it up some and now we're just going to glue wherever we see exposed unfinished wood you can see that I have this popsicle stick I have good intentions of being safe and not burning myself um, to use it to press down the moss after I set it on top of the glue. And here I am completely not using the popsicle stick, but I have it in my hand. I'm a genius. So you're pretty much going to go around the entire thing, gluing, adding moss, and trimming over and over until you have everything covered that really that you find unattractive on the project that you think needs some coverage. You see here, I did use the popsicle stick um, to get into very tight spaces where my glue gun wouldn't go, and it worked out very well for that. I thought about covering the board on the front and sides with moss, but I ended up just doing some dry brushing in white, and I liked how that turned out. 
you can see that I added some more moss on the roof line of the houses just to cover up any little empty spaces or mess ups. And I made little letters and that mailbox has some scrolls with paper in it. If you have children, they would absolutely love this project. If they're not old enough to use a glue gun, maybe use a clear school glue and just let it dry overnight. But this project was so fun and I just got through ma done making it and I already want to make another one. Thank you so much for watching today and being patient with this somewhat long video. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.